to open up uh, at, at, in Genesis chapter uh, 4. And I want to be able to give to you that, uh, that parallel or that distinction. And that this uh, chapter here is dealing, the first part that we're going to deal with, uh, is uh, with Cain and Abel. And so this morning, I would like to just for a few moments uh, preach to you uh, the sin of Cain. Why was sin, uh, Cain's sin so terrible? Why was it that it uh, caused him to be exiled uh, out of the hands of God? Amen? And so, uh, uh, so let's look into that. Genesis chapter 4. Uh, and we'll stand to our feet uh, and read these few passages here this morning. Genesis chapter 4, as we read beginning in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 4, the Bible says, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she, be, uh, and she again bare uh, his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me, from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a uh, vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a, a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding shall kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Let's go to the Lord in prayer there. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and we ask, dear God, of your great blessings upon our life. But, Heavenly Father, before we can receive your blessings, dear God, we must be able to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, into our heart. Maybe perhaps today, dear God, we stand here in your sight and we have received Jesus Christ as our Savior, but yet we still do not have your blessings. And so this morning, I pray that tonight, uh, this morning, dear God, that, Lord, you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to reason this morning of this message. Dear God, I ask for your filling upon my mind and my speech and help me dear God not to be offended in saying the wrong words but Lord that I would say exactly what you have commanded today and so today Heavenly Father I thank you for your love and your grace for it's in Jesus name we do pray amen thank you be seated 
In this chapter, we need to see that uh, we can learn of the anguish, what sin causes us. Uh, here we find that Cain's offering was rejected by God and how uh, not only that was rejected, but we find also in this chapter the attitude that Cain had when God rejected of Cain's offering. And so uh, what is it this morning, the choices that we make that simply can cause us to be re, uh, received or rejected uh, by God? Now, as preachers, oftentimes we preach the gospel, the gospel is being preached that we must receive uh, Jesus Christ as our Savior. But today we're going to flip that around and to say that uh, if you were to go to God uh, with who you are and what you stand for, would God receive you this morning? Often, oftentimes we don't see that God receives us as, uh, as a people. Uh, a lot of times we, uh, we, we live, in, the, uh, we live uh, 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 in our lives. Everybody has uh, certain habits and certain abilities, and yet uh, we live our life, and, and our friends and our families, they accept us, but we don't realize that sometimes God doesn't accept those things. And so here in the leading chapter, we could go back to Genesis and uh, we can find uh, the results of uh, mankind. We can find here in chapter 3 the very fall of, uh, of mankind. Uh, go over with me and uh, just look a few words. We, we, we often preach this, and I believe it's very important for us to be familiar uh, what Genesis 3 Chapter 3 very, uh, very much is because this is where we can find uh, all of us this morning. But Genesis chapter 3, look in verse 1 with me. Uh, the Bible says, uh, verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Listen, folks, I want to stop there today. I've met mankind from down from, uh, from the time that I was young. I, I remember being there on Token Street in South Carolina. And, uh, and I remember they had a wall out there, a little short parable wall. And I remember uh, the men of the street. I remember my dad and my uncle and, and their friends get on that wall. And they sit down on that wall and drink their beer and talk about how, how much knowledge, how much important life really was to them. But I think about uh, that from the time, uh, that time on up, how I've met mankind, how uh, mankind really believes how intelligent they really are. And yet the Bible says that uh, in verse 1, but that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. I want you to think about today uh, how, uh, how, uh, how, how much knowledge or how, uh, how uh, this, uh, this serpent, he's subtle, he, he understands mankind, he understands your weaknesses, he understands your strengths. You can never think about the enemy. The enemy is never going to come against you in your strength, but he will come against you in your weaknesses. And I want to say to you this morning, folks, uh, that here this, uh, this chapter 3 uh, reveals the fall of mankind. Now let's go and finish our reading. The Bible says in verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, made, uh, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall, uh, shall not eat of the tree, uh, ye shall not eat of the every tree in the garden. Uh, and the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Folks, here it is uh, that we can see how uh, Satan, he's not attacking Adam where the Bible says uh, that the man uh, is the strong, uh, he's a strong man of the home. Uh, we don't find him attacking Adam, but he goes to the weaker vessel. He goes to the woman. And yet here uh, is just a, uh, an elaboration that uh, just what I've already said, that here's Satan, the enemy, always attacks our weaknesses. And today, folks, uh, we need to realize how important that is to understand that this battle that we have with Satan and his forces. 
Today, we think about uh, where we're at. We can think about how, how uh, mankind has uh, fallen, and yet um, that the only solution is, is the solution that the whole world is rejecting. So today, we can come to God in our intelligence, but yet God doesn't receive intelligence. And so what is it that we can find in our lives? Well, well here again, we go on and we find that here uh, Satan, uh, the serpent, uh, is uh, more subtle than any beast. He goes to Eve and he does his best trickery, and that is to tell a lie. You know, many of God's people today believe those lies, and they live in them. Folks, I want you to know today that here, as we, uh, as we try to develop this, uh, this message, you're either going to be accepted or you're going to be rejected by Jesus Christ. Me, uh, Jesus says, meaning those days that we'll go to the Lord and, and uh, we expect for God to receive us, but he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. I wonder today, if we stopped and realized how mankind has affected. You know, I remember before I was, just before I was saved, I guess I really had a chip on my shoulder, but I remember that just before I was saved that, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, well, why can't people do this? And why can't people do that? Why can't people uh, make the right choices? Well, you know, I was a little ignorant, amen? I didn't realize that the uh, that uh, Satan was or the serpent was more subtle than I, and so I uh, and and I went and I remember uh, chastising or uh, or discriminating uh, the things that I grew up in. I I grew up in an alcoholic uh, home and I I hated the, all those things. I hated uh, my mom. I hated my dad. I even hated my brother. I even kicked the dog and slung the cat around and see how high you can go. I did a lot of wicked things. Why? Because I didn't understand how subtle the devil was in my life. You say, what does all that mean? Well, that simply means that a lot of, the, uh, a lot of God's people today are deceived by this subtlety. And so here we find Man's kind. Here we find uh, how mankind has uh, simply been affected, and the results was uh, that they died that day. Go with me in verse uh, four. And the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil." And the woman said unto the, uh, and, the wo and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And here it is. Verse 7, and their eyes of them both were open and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made, un, uh, made themselves aprons. And so here we find uh, that they uh, received the very knowledge. They realized at this instant when they ate of the fruit that they had disobeyed the command of God. Can I ask you a question this morning? I wonder how many of us live our lives, live our lives in a way to where we know when we disobey God. Well, we've heard it from the preacher. We've heard it somehow in our life, and yet we continue to break those commandments. You know, what really breaks my heart is when we find ourselves as God's people to break God's commands. The greatest blessings that we can have is when we, we can be received by God. Go back with me to, uh, into our chapter, Genesis chapter 4. 
And look with me uh, once again, verse 3. Notice this phrase. And in process of time. Can I get you to think this morning that God gives us enough time to make our choice? Amen? I mean, God, perhaps you're here. You may be 30. You may be 40. Whatever it may be. God has given you a process of time, a time to make a decision for Christ. Today you may be saved. And you say, well, I'm saved. I don't have to worry about uh, 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 my soul going to hell. And yet you're saved. But I want to say to you that God has given you a process of time to get things right. Folks, if you are saved, I wouldn't want to meet God in your sin. Amen? I mean, I wouldn't want to be that kind, that kind of guy that would stand before Jesus Christ and everybody is being rewarded of their faith. I believe that, amen. I believe we're going to be rewarded of our faith, but I wouldn't want to be that kind of guy, that individual that would stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and on earth we say, hey, I, I love Jesus. Hey, he's the best thing ever happened. And yet we stand before him in glory. We have nothing to show for it. Folks, truth is going to come out one day. Amen? You're, well, who you are is going to be revealed. And here we make a mention of sin of Cain. His sin was revealed in his life. And so that process time, look at it. Uh, verse 3, and in process of time, notice this, and it came to pass. Amen? So the process of time, one day it's going to be ended. And your choices for Christ will be made. And then the results are going to come. Notice that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. You know, one day that's going to be you and I. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord Jesus Christ one day. Uh, if we're saved, we're going to go there. Hey, Lord. The life that you give me, that you gave me, look what I did for you. Amen? That's not boasting. I, I don't think that's boasting. But I think that should be a reality uh, to the lives that you and I live. Because one day, uh, it's going to come to pass. And we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to, we're going to give an answer all the hours that we watch TV. All the hours that we put something ungodly before our eyes. We're going to give an answer one day. All the things that we heard. I think about uh, when I got saved. And one of the things uh, that God took away from me was the very cursing. You know, I, I used to curse like, well, I mean, bad. Amen? Bad. Bad cursing. God took that away. And uh, I remember uh, the, uh, uh, when he took that cursing away, when I had no desire, when, I, when, when cursing wasn't pleasing to me, why well, I got away from hearing the dirty jokes. And, and, you know, uh, all the dirty jokes got curse words in it, all that filth and all that. And I, 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 folk, I want you to know that, hey, uh, today there's going to be a process time, and you're going to stand before God, and you're going to give an answer. To him, your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet. And so today, here we uh, discover that in Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. But go on with me. Uh, and I uh, brought unto the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And verse 4, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord, uh, notice this. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, you notice that here, what's happening here, that you can't call Cain that he was an uh, atheist because he somewhat had to realize that there's God. The Bible shows that, uh, that God... Uh, talking with them, you see the conversation. 
So he couldn't say that, well, God didn't exist. It is not, it is not unlike what you and I are discovering today. Well, where is God? I've never seen God. Have you seen God? Well, I haven't. Uh, have you seen God? No, none of us ever seen God. So we can't say, well, God uh, doesn't exist. We know uh, somehow, some way that there is a God because uh, the explanation and how, uh, how the cre- this world is created, how you and I are created, amen? And so we know that there's a God. I don't believe that truly there is an atheist. I don't believe that. I believe that simply it's just their denial of receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. And you say, well, how can you prove that point? Well, uh, uh, let me ask you a question, okay? I was just watching this, this guy, he explained creation in two minutes. And so uh, the guy drew a circle round about, and he asked, he says, if I took a line and I drew just a little portion of that circle, he says, would you believe that this knowledge, you, you have a lot of knowledge, and, uh, and, 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 and would, this, would this suffice your knowledge among this circle? And the man says, yes. And the guy said, well, you seem to be a, an intelligent person. And the individual says, I, I know. And so he says, okay, well, you see, if you, if you agree that you would have this much knowledge and, uh, and, and you say that and, 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 all, and all this circle, you say, well, I have this much knowledge, but what is it for the rest of the circle that you don't understand. He said, well, I just haven't learned it yet. He said, so if I wrote inside of this, that I wrote the, uh, the, the letter God, you would say that there are some things that you know about God, but you don't know at all. This morning, I would say to you today, we know some things about God, but we don't know at all. And even if there's some things that we do know about God, would help us to understand that God is a vast uh, individual, something that uh, is more than we can ever understand. I mean, you know, the scientists, they, God has proven to them today that there are more worlds beyond that we think of our own galaxy. And yet today, we can't say that God doesn't exist. We must realize that there must be something beyond our own knowledge, beyond that we already know. And it would have to be that there's a God that we just don't understand. And so this morning, I want to uh, say to you that, uh, that that time is going to pass to where we're going to be just like Cain and Abel. One day, we're going to go to God, and we're going to offer him our lives, the fruit of our lives. And yet, God's going to receive that, or he's going to reject it. And so this morning, what is it? And Cain, that was so terrible. Well, I want to say to you this morning that Cain committed two horrible crimes. And I believe that today God's people are doing the same thing. You say, well, what is it, uh, uh, brother? What is it that uh, uh, those crimes that Cain committed? Well, number one, he changed God's worship to suit himself. Go with me to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and uh, today, we can find this even in our world today. Romans chapter 1, and uh, just look with me just a few verses, and uh, we, we, won't, we won't go throughout the whole reading, but uh, I, I would tell you, uh, I would mark these, these uh, verses down. I can't even get to the Romans, amen? Uh, Romans chapter 1, all right, here it is, and uh, look with me. Uh, Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Uh, Notice that here God does show us some things about himself, amen. And how does he do it? Well, he does it in verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So you and I, we can't give an excuse that, well, I, I, I didn't know that the trees didn't grow. I mean, I saw them, 
but I didn't know that they were growing. I saw the flowers, but I can't say that I ever smelled a flower, yeah, although the fragrance was welling up in my nostrils, right? And so for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are, that are without an excuse. So here, even God shows his eternal power and Godhead in creations. And so today, uh, we can find that, uh, and, and we can find uh, in this same chapter how uh, they, uh, they, they twist uh, the worship of God. Go to verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Can you, can you circle this word for me? Imagination. Doesn't say imagination. Says imaginations. In other words, uh, when you and, uh, and I were in school, we learned that when an S was at the end of the word, it meant plural. It meant more of. Uh, many, many thereof. And so here, uh, there are many uh, vain imaginations in their minds that twist the worship of God and change it. And yet, the Bible says that it, be, it makes their heart become foolish and darkened. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And so today, we find that very thing. You know, one of the discouraging things that I have had on my vacation is this, is that we go to vacation and we go, and I believe that we should be in, in the house of God. Amen. I claim that I'm a Christian, and I claim that I'm God's child. Well, I need to be where God commands his children to be, and that is to be in the house of God. Amen. And so one of the discouraging things that I find uh, on vacation is, uh, is going to church and yet going there and, 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 and ready to open my heart, ready to worship God and get the very message that God has me and walk into a church and they've changed the very worship of God. You know, I don't know what that does for you, but it offends me. Amen? It offends me. You say, well, pastor, what would you do in that situation? Well, I'd be honest to you. I'd get up and walk out. Amen. I, that, that, that would be no different to me. That would be no different today. If, if we began to change our worship in this church, I'd, I'd resign tomorrow and I'd walk out. You're saying you, you wouldn't do that. Listen, God knows my heart. Amen. And, uh, and I hope that God knows your heart. Because the reality is that many people today are changing God's worship. Amen. And so today, uh, we're not to worship the piano. We're not to worship the pulpit. Although we pray for these areas that, hey, God, whoever you place in the, behind the piano, whoever you place behind the pulpit, hey, we want them to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for those things. And yet, uh, we, we need to understand that here, uh, one of the sins uh, that committed that Cain committed was that he changed the worship God to suit himself go back with me uh, to Genesis and uh, chapter 4 and look uh, here along with me verse 6 the Bible says and the Lord said unto Cain why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest, uh, and if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. 
May I say to you today, a lot of times we come to church. Amen? And we come uh, maybe because we were taught to go to church. And I believe that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I believe that going to church is a good thing. I, 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 I in fact, I believe that what my father-in-law did was the right thing. He took his children to church. He taught them the Bible. You say, well, how do you know that? I'm doing the same thing. I take my church, uh, my children to church. Yes, there are times they are like hellions, amen. I mean, they come in the house of God. I mean, the preacher's kid is causing all the problems and, and so forth. But I believe uh, that's the right and proper thing. And I believe that uh, that is the reason why God is working in their hearts to help them to memorize scripture and planting those seeds of salvation from very youth. I believe it's important. But I believe that uh, if we don't, if we come to church as just as we've been taught and forget that we come to church to meet God, I believe sin lies at the door. Because uh, God uh, wants us to understand that it is so easy for you, and, uh, for you and I to change God's worship. You say, what do you mean? Well, let's think about this. Let's think about the preacher. He preaches a message, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and you don't like what he preaches about it, so you want to go to the preacher, you want to stand in his face, you want to stand in your indignation and say, let me tell you something, brother, mister. And yet you don't realize that you're changing God's worship because God has ordained the church. Whether you like it or not, you can't change that. A lot of folks today, they're changing, uh, they're trying to change the worship of God, but God's no involvement in it. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, they might say that they're worshiping Jesus Christ, but in our text, God says he has rejected them. God says he has not accepted them. Have you, did you miss it? Go back with me. Verse 3, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but Cain, but unto Cain his offering he had not respect. And so, listen, when you and I change God's worship, when you and I tried to change what God is wanting to do in our lives, God's not going to have respect for that. And so we find this morning that one of the sins that Cain committed was that he committed a sin against God's worship. The second thing that we can find uh, in this text is that he killed his brother Abel. Now, uh, go along with me and, and notice uh, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. That word slew simply meant killed. And so today you, you would say, well, I, I haven't killed my brother. I haven't uh, done that. And yet today we need to see this morning how Satan's uh, forces, they go about us uh, to do that very thing in our life. You know, how, is he, how does he do that? How does Satan use our own life to kill our brother? You know how he does that? Through our attitudes. That's exactly how he does it. A lot of times our attitudes make a uh, distinction in who we really are. You know, you can't say to this morning that you're really close with God. You can't say that, well, uh, you know, I know God is with me. Why? Because he protects you from an accident? Hmm? I mean, God's grace is on the, on the just and on the unjust. You say, well, I, I, I know that God is with me. Why? Because you got money in the bank? Eh, that money don't mean nothing. I mean, you know, money can't buy life. Amen? I think about many mothers and many fathers that, uh, that have uh, watched their children uh, go on into eternity. 
Money can never buy that. And so you say, well, what do you have? What do you have this morning that you can uh, buy and change your attitude? A lot of folks today are buying drugs, thinking that they're going to change their attitude about life. They don't never change them. It doesn't ever change. A lot of people, folks today, they buy alcohol. Well, I'm going to change uh, 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 my thoughts. And it changes their thoughts, all right. But I'm going to tell you right now, their life is not accepted by God. So you, uh, today, we can use uh, the world's methods, but it's never going to make us right with God. All it's going to do is cause us to create uh, or, 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 or give that opportunity to kill uh, our brother, you say, well, so, so you say, well, pastor, if, if I use the world's method, how do you know, how can you say that I kill uh, my brother? Well, I'll tell you how you do it, because you cause a stumbling block. See, when you and I cause a stumbling block for someone else to sin, and we place ourselves so, in, in, in this an arena to where, well, uh, Samson did. Samson was one that he was mighty in strength. And he thought that, hey, uh, I can come and I can do whatever I want. I can have the, the, the women that God told me not to have. I can do whatever I want. I can go in the sin. I can come out. I can rise up and I can defeat all. And yet one day Samson woke up and realized that God did not accept him. And so, uh, so how can we uh, kill our brother? Well, we can cause a stumbling block for him. And so this morning, just a uh, few things as we begin to close. I want to give to you what God's placed in my heart. What was the problem of Cain? Well, this morning, I want to say that Cain's problem was simply his self. Himself. You say, uh, what do you mean? Well, I want to say to you this morning that uh, Cain... He had the, the same opportunity that Abel had. Go back with me in our text, and we'll find it. Verse 1 of uh, Genesis chapter 4, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, he's the first, and said, I have gotten a man from the, uh, from the Lord, and, it, uh, and, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. Two different worlds. Amen. But yet, two worlds that create different fruit. You know, God never rejected Cain because of the fruit. In fact, God allowed that fruit to, uh, uh, to grow. He allowed the, the fruit you remember we go in our text down a little bit deeper uh, and, and uh, where the Bible says, verse 12, uh, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. God put a curse on the ground so it wouldn't grow no more. But yet God had respect for Abel and not Cain. Well, I believe that a lot of it dealt with his attitude. A lot of it dealt within himself. You say, well, Pastor uh, Boyce, what does that mean for me? Well, I'm trying to get you to understand that this morning, Satan's forces are there in your life to smooth things out. You say, what do you mean? Well, uh, he wants us, uh, he wants to, uh, Satan uses his forces into our life. And he uses uh, the uh, predisposition of sin, and he smooths things out. Here he, we read in chapter 3 where he went to Eve and made it look very appealing. Uh, a tree that was one to be desired, one to make one wise. Uh, made it very uh, smoothed it out into her life and attempted her, and she sinned against God. Not only against God, if I may say, but against her husband. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, just like I read to you this morning, gave to you this morning in Psalms chapter 61, that when we are uh, that uh, when when uh, when we get saved, God removes that authority uh, and that protection, and He places it under Jesus Christ. 
today you, uh, we need to see that when, we, uh, when we're married, and God uh, allows us to be married, uh, the man, as they always say, must learn to, I, I, I don't mean to offend nobody, please, Mr. Fred, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. But the phrase is, need to man up. Amen? The Bible teaches a lot of that, that the man needs, he's the head of the home, he needs to man up, he needs to learn how to handle the authority and protection of his wife and family. Amen? And, uh, and, and then uh, the wife, uh, she needs to learn how to embrace that authority and the protection. Thank God for women today. I appreciate women, all the women that's been in my life. Uh, but, you know, women aren't going to stand in judgment. You know, they're going to stand underneath their husband. And the husband is going to have all the judgment placed on his, him, his wife, and all of that. And it starts with the man. And so, uh, so this morning, we need to see that a lot of our problems uh, are simply in ourselves. Why? Because Satan is there to make sin uh, as smooth as possible, and uh, but in reality, uh, he's there to open that doorway of dominion of sin. See, God don't want sin to have dominion in your life. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. Amen? Today, you and I, uh, we, uh, we are either accepted, uh, accepted or rejected uh, by God, but that's done through our choices. And today, you can choose to live in sin, but yet God's not going to accept you. You know, God, God will never do that, amen? Why? Because he's a holy God, amen? He's a righteous God. God can't tangle uh, in, uh, or uh, mingle with sin and be holy. So we, we as God's people need to understand that difference. Notice uh, in verse uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, notice what happened here. Uh, Satan, how he, uh, he tries to get uh, he, uh, us to believe that he can make us a God of ourselves. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So Satan's allurement is to think that you are such a, or like a god, and that, uh, that uh, you, you know, God has no dominion over you, you see? And yet, God may not have dominion over you, but sin does. And if sin has dominion over you, then you're rejected by God. See how that works? You say, what does all that really mean to me? Well, folks, I want you to understand this morning that you and I are not God. Amen? We are only God's subjects. And today, I'd pray for every believer this morning to choose God over your sin. You say... Well, but you don't understand how powerful these addictions are. No, I understand very clearly. I understand because I believe that God has helped me through a lot of them. And you, you, would, you, you would say, well, but you don't understand uh, what, uh, what my background is. No, I understand. I understand we all don't have the right background. I understand that we wish that we had more than what we have. But I want to say to you this morning, Satan is more subtle than any beast of the field. That even describes today. Satan is more subtle than you and I, and he knows how, he knows how to get to your weaknesses. But you've got to learn how to take those weaknesses and place them into the hands of God. Satan, he tries to turn us against each other. Here, uh, go with me to verse, uh, uh, back to uh, Genesis chapter 4. Look with me in verse 9. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? 
And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Now, we, we, go, we go right back to verse 8, and, and I think that we need to do that just to bring a reality this morning. But here we find in verse 9, here a, uh, Cain is speaking to God, I know not where my brother is. Oh, really? Go with me to verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel's brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. You mean to tell me that just moments later after Cain had killed his brother that he didn't know where his brother was? Sure he did. You say, well, how do you know that he did? Well, folks, I know the Bible doesn't describe this, but if today, uh, if I could just get you to understand that maybe Cain, uh, he, uh, he killed his brother and he buried him. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, go with me to verse 10. All right? And, uh, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now, I know it don't just say that, that Cain buried his brother, but it sure does describe that. It sure does give a picture. And so this morning, you, you're saying, well, uh, I haven't sinned. Well, you know, I like to believe that myself. I like to sometimes believe that I'm a, I'm a goody two-shoe, amen? I really do. I try my best, amen? But I got kids, amen? And I, and, and I got kids, and the Bible says that the sins of a man go down to even to the fourth generation. And so today, I may say that I'm a good two-shoe, but when you look into the life of my kids and find that they're sinners, they had, they had to come from somewhere, or they came from the Father. And so this morning, Satan, he tries to get us to turn to each other, and yet, he tries to get us to lie in the face of God. Well, I haven't sinned. Here, Cain saying that he didn't kill his brother. He didn't know where his brother was at. And yet the Bible describes that his, uh, his brother's blood crieth from the ground. Can I ask you a question this morning? How do you react when, call, when God calls you or calls you out of your sin? How do you react? When God places his hand on that very sin that you're involving in. How do you act? Well, sometimes we can act like Cain. God, you have no right to tell me of my sin. He doesn't. Folks, I want to say to you today, God has every right. Because this is his field. This is his earth. And yet God looks for those examples. Uh, I mean, God looks for the fruit. And so this morning, there are some examples. I won't be able to go through all of them, but I want to give to you one. Uh, I'll give you the others, but I want to discuss one tonight, uh, this morning. But I think about the case of Saul in 1 Samuel, and I think about the case of David uh, in 2 Samuel. But this morning, I want, to, uh, I want to bring out to you this morning how God, he he recognizes or he sees our rebellion. Uh, go with me to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16, and, and we'll go through. We won't be long, amen. Uh, uh, I never preach. I always preach just before the turkeys to burn up, amen. So I never preach when the turkeys burn. So don't worry about it, amen. I'll be done plenty of time, amen. But in Numbers uh, uh, chapter 16, uh, here we find uh, the... Uh, children of Israel. Here we have Moses and Aaron and Joshua uh, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Remember the Bible says that uh, they went through the wilderness 40, 40 years and all of that. And, uh, but yet here we find uh, the, the issue uh, of with Korah. Go with me to uh, uh, Numbers chapter 16 and let's look in verse 1 through 4. The Bible says, now Korah the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and uh, Dathan, and Abram, uh, and sons of Elabi, 
uh, and on the son of uh, Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses and with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown, uh, renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift, up, uh, then lift ye up yourselves upon the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. So here we find simply the rebellion of uh, Korah, and, uh, and the Bible says that he had 250 uh, princes. Uh, wait a minute. At verse 2, at 250 princes of the assembly. And so he had these leaders of, the, uh, of Israel going up and against Moses. And yet uh, we find that uh, it, this, uh, this story uh, only escalated. And, uh, and so that's where we're going to try to bring out. So I want to be able to do that with you this morning. So uh, how it escalated is that uh, Korah took these men. They went up against uh, Moses and Aaron and said and, and told them, hey, you got too much on your hands, uh, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take this portion. I'm going to lead them off to the way I believe and think it should be done. You know how many of God's people do that today? You, you with me? Listen, there's churches, and I'm not refuting of people being saved. I'm not refuting that. But I am refuting that people, if they are saved, a lot, uh, uh, many of them don't have their heart right. Because uh, if, if their heart is right, they're going to follow uh, the, uh, the leading of God's men. But here we find churches all over America that are simply not following after God had uh, ordained the church, but we find that churches are changing their ways of worship. They're changing their styles, uh, like I made mention today. Uh, we go into a church, and they they are uh, supposed to be a, uh, when you look up online, got fundamental independent Baptist church, amen. I think those are... Uh, 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 those are words that, you know, we want to hold on to. But, yeah, you go on up in the church and all that's changed. They don't preach out of the King James Bible. They preach out of the NIV or the New King James Bible. And, uh, and the preacher don't look like the preacher. He looks like uh, the, a guy getting ready to go play on a golf tournament as soon as church is over. You know, I, I, I'm going to say it to you, man. We, you know, you and I, we need to hold on to our fundamental beliefs. Amen. We need to look the part. We need to act the part, amen? You know, Bible has a lot about our, uh, our behavior, and that's, what it, that's where it is, where it was with Cain. Uh, God, God wasn't rejecting uh, what uh, Cain was, but he rejected his heart because he didn't want to do it God's way. And so here we find Korah, the same principle, same living the same rebellious lifestyle. But then notice what, uh, in verse 20 through 24, notice what, how God wanted to deal, to deal with the rebellion. Look with me in verse 20 of, of number 16. <clears throat> verse 20, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh shall, uh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, uh, verse 24, And Moses, uh, and, uh, speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from, uh, uh, from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and uh, a Abraham. And so here God told them to separate themselves from this rebellion. Amen? Can I say to you tonight, this morning, uh, you know, we must separate ourselves from those things that God will not have respect of. Amen? 
Now, uh, here we, we're making mention of, re, uh, of rebellion, uh, and that's not saying that any of you are rebellion, but simply to say that there are attitudes that uh, perhaps would cause rebellion, and God wouldn't have respect for that. And so what does the Bible say? Well, we must separate ourselves uh, from those things. So God wanted to deal with the rebellion, but thank God that there are, were men in the crowd and uh, that men were willing, like Moses, was willing to go to God, and, 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 and that's what he did. So go with me as we look how Moses, he uh, obeyed God and went unto the congregation and spoke the very words of the Lord. So look with me in verse 25 through 27. The Bible says, So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abram, on every side. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that pertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, they, uh, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Now, I want to say to you that, uh, and I'm trying to get to you this morning in, uh, in this, that, uh, you know, I really believe, I really believe this, that God has his hand on First Baptist Church. And so what, is that, what does that mean for us in the message this morning? Well, if we take that lightly, you with me? You take that lightly and we send the sin of Cain, we allowed our attitudes to change God's worship or what God's trying to do here, God will remove his hand. Now, I, I want you to consider this this morning, how important that is, because I wasn't here last uh, week, and I, don't, I haven't heard any report. But I want to tell you this, what God has spoke to me, that here just a few weeks ago we had tent revival. And I believe that uh, God's hand has been upon us because there were a few souls saved. Now, they may not be what you think uh, what salvation should be, but I want to say to you that, uh, that uh, our attitude makes all of the difference. Amen? Our attitude makes all the difference. I wonder today if you and I simply gave over uh, those things that don't bring respect unto God. Think about our backslidings. How many of us today would simply, hey, God, I'm not going to backslide on you no more. Hey, I'm going to stay at the throne of God. I'm going to stay close to you as close as possible. I'm not going to run out the door and, and run from my problems. I'm going to deal with them, and I'm going to deal with them the right way. How many of us could turn over our backslider this morning? How many of us could uh, turn over our stealings? You say, well, I don't steal. Yeah, how, how, how often you rob God? You haven't paid your tithes. You haven't done right in your offerings. Or you, uh, you robbed God in your time. Or you, you, you've held back when, when God told you to go and do this. And you said, I'm not going to give that person a track. I'm just going to let them go on to hell. You know, I was talking to my uh, wife on the way home. We had a great conversation, Brother Hagin. And I asked her, I asked her this question. I asked her this question. Let me, let me get it out, man. Let me ask you a question. I mean, I'm going to ask you, open blank statement. Who is the God of hell? Hmm. It's kind of intriguing, isn't it? Well, Satan is the God of hell. Well, that's great, and I think that's wonderful that you say that because uh, he is going to go down in history as the prince of hell. But he's not a God. You say, so what does that mean? Well, I, well, I believe that. The God of hell is simply the same God that is the God of creation. And so, so you know, the, the devil is trying to change our minds that he's the God of hell. And he has no hold on you and I. The only time that he has a hold on our lives is when we live with that attitude, just like Cain. Cain wanted to change God's worship. And Cain, he killed his brother because God told him 
He wanted to do it his way. How many of us this morning kill our brother because we want to do it our way and we don't want to do it God's way? Listen, folks, I say that's the sin of Cain. This morning, perhaps maybe you need to realize that the only solution that was for Cain was God's love. See, he didn't, he didn't accept God's love. In fact, he rejected it. Today, if you and I are going to be saved, if you and I are going to experience the blessings of eternity, we're going to, to have to accept that love that God has for you and I. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting love. Today you may have that everlasting love, but you may be causing your brother to stumble. And today, wherever your case may be, I, I pray that there be no canes in here. I pray that, uh, and, I, and we really strive for this. I mean, you know, the, the folks that uh, God has placed in this church, I want to say that we really strive to have the right attitude. But I want to say to you today that if you and I, if we give up, trying to do what's right, well, we have nothing to hope for. It won't matter that you hope in Jesus. It won't matter because you'll, you'll be just like a statistic in the world. Uh, you'll be like every other individual. Hey, the world cries out for love. They tell each other they love them. And so, I mean, they, they, they love one another. They take, I, I mean, I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen the mafia take better care of their people, killing people, sending them to hell, than Christians taking care of one another. You say, that don't bring no importance to you and I. You say, so today, you and I, you say, well, we, we have the love of God in our lives. Well, hey, what makes the difference? What makes the difference our attitude. And today, God wants to lead this church, amen, into a direction. Many churches today are falling by the wayside. You know, we would be no different if we changed our attitude towards God. So I'm encouraging you this morning. What we've seen in that term of Bible can only be a small taste of what God can really do when you and I get the right attitude. God, I'm not going to run, and I'm not going to live in my backsliding no more. I'm not going to live in my affairs. I'm not going to follow the world, but I'm going to submit myself unto your authority and your protection. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we want to come to you today, dear God, as Lord, as the piano's